Hello and welcome to another video in the series that I'm making um, looking at the rules outline for the All Hell Let Loose 6mm World War II tabletop war games rules written by David Wasilewski. Uh, in this video I'm going to look at formation quality, um, unit resilience and morale. The quality of uh, troops is always determined at the formation level. Um, this is particularly important when things like cross-attaching are involved. Um, and whatever is cross-attached, um, the quality of that troop is determined by the quality of the formation that it's attached into. So, for example, attaching uh, a company of tigers into a um, Vox Grenadier a formation of inexperienced uh, older troops. Um, well, I'm afraid the Tigers uh, take on the inexperienced quality as well. So what I've done is I've laid out um, three different troops, uh, three different units, uh, just to represent uh, kind of how quality uh, determines uh, the resilience uh, that these troops have. So we have here starting on the left, um, we have a stand of um, Vox Grenadiers. Again, I'm um, older, less experienced um, German troops uh, kind of pushed into the front line in late 1944 and, and uh, 1945. And those might typically be regarded as inexperienced. And they are capable of withstanding um, two disorder before the third disorder uh, kills them. I mean, they can still be killed by firing or combat, but um, if you disorder troops, the more you disorder them, the more likely they are to uh, wither away. And so for the inexperienced troops, uh, the third disorder uh, destroys them. And next, uh, have a typical stand representing American infantry. Um, they might be regarded uh, typically as regular and they have a resilience score of four, meaning that they can withstand three disorder with the fourth one uh, destroying them. And then finally, uh, I've got a unit representing, uh, say, SS um, um, veterans uh, from Russia that are redeployed. Uh, to the Western theatre and again they typically might be regarded as veteran troops and veteran troops have a resilience uh, of five uh, and so they can uh, sustain four disorders before the fifth one uh, destroys them. Formation quality also determines how effectively the formation is uh, capable of acting. Um, activation is uh, a D6 roll and the formation quality depends which line of a table that um, the result is compared against. And the result is, is that veteran uh, troops will act more frequently and better than regular troops who in turn will act more frequently and better than inexperienced troops. And so in um, a way to, to kind of really demonstrate that, what I've done is uh, placed uh, the same three uh, units you saw a moment ago uh, along the river and that indicates after six turns of movement uh, orders once deployed uh, how far you could typically expect uh, an inexperienced formation, a regular formation and a veteran formation to have moved. Um, again, six turns, so I'm just assuming uh, each uh, number on the dice has come up once. So I'm starting to measure here. So I'm going to begin uh, measuring my movement for the three different uh, unit types uh, here. Uh, all three have the same uh, effective movement speed, the difference is uh, in terms of uh, activation results. So if we assume that each unit um, moves in every single one of its order phases 
um, whether it gets a partial uh, a good or uh, um, a normal activation, uh, then we can kind of see um, the difference in the effectiveness of the troops. So moving up, and each one of these um, stream pieces is effectively 15 centimeters or six inches long. And as you can see, we're moving up, moving on, moving on, and all the units have got a reasonable uh, movement. And then we encounter our first uh, unit, which is the inexperienced. Uh, they're here at 36 inches. Just beyond them is uh, the regular troops, and they're at 39 inches across six turns. And then up ahead at 45 inches are the uh, veteran troops. And that gives you an idea of uh, how um, the troop quality uh, can influence movement. If we look at, again, the same uh, units and consider how often they could undertake uh, an assault or how often they could attempt to rally, then again, you can see a subtle difference uh, in their ability to do that in that the inexperienced formation will get to do uh, across six dice uh, or six turns with uh, an even distribution of the dice would get to act five times, whereas the regular formation will get to act six times and the veteran for, um, formation or units will get to act seven times. Uh, again, the subtle difference um, just um, um, subtly emphasises uh, the difference in quality of troops uh, without making it overpowering. So what you can see here is that there are four uh, German uh, formation markers in strategic mode. And uh, I've placed a American marker simply to mark uh, uh, an artillery target point. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire artillery and I'm going to apply the result to all four of these markers. Uh, you would only be targeting one in the game, but what I want to do is demonstrate uh, what would happen uh, if you hit um, a dummy marker, if you hit an inexperienced uh, formation, if you hit a regular formation, and if you hit uh, a veteran formation with a standard uh, artillery uh, attack. So I'm going to fire four 105 millimeter guns uh, and just see what the impact is. Um, now that's 12 dice uh, according to the uh, rules for indirect fire and I'll hit on 5-6. Uh, and so, well, what do you know? I have four hits. Exactly uh, statistically what we should expect. So if we start first with a dummy counter, well the dummy counter is regarded as having uh, a um, resilience score uh, same as inexperienced. So in this case the dummy counter would have taken um, four disorder, uh, that's one more than its resilience and therefore the dummy counter gets flipped but as it's a dummy counter there's nothing there, it is removed. Now uh, we move to the next counter, I think we'll do this one here. Um, this is uh, an uh, a, a inexperienced formation, it's now taken four disorder, so it has to deploy. I'm not going to I'm not going to put all of the various units on. But what would happen is we put uh, the troops down and the four disorder that has been accumulated are dispersed evenly according to um, the uh, owning player's wishes. But that unit is forced to deploy. And if it hasn't already activated, so if its dice is still in the dice bag, because it has been forced to deploy, it is considered to have acted in this turn. And 
we'll just put um, a notional HQ there. Um, if that uh, attack had now hit a, uh, well, we'll do this one, a regular formation. Well, the regular formation has a disorder of four, so again, it is forced to deploy. And again, disorder would be placed uh, against each of these formations to indicate that four uh, were hit by uh, the artillery fire. And again, remember, if this unit has not already acted, then its dice comes out of the dice bag. Um, the deployment is considered a uh, move for, for the turn. Okay, so there we have four um, disordered units um, and I've put, again, haven't deployed everything, but just to indicate that that would be what would normally happen. And then finally, um, this particular unit we're going to consider as being the veteran. It's taken four disorder. Well, they have five disorder. So we just mark the uh, strategic marker as having four disorder. Uh, it's not sufficient to have forced that formation uh, out of strategic mode, um, but that disorder is carried forward. Uh, it can't be cleared until um, the player deploys uh, their formation and uh, subsequently uh, uh, gets, uh, gets to act. So it would need to successfully activate in order to uh, rally those disorder away. So even um, though we haven't actually forced this formation to deploy, we are actually slowing it down significantly. It will take uh, at least um, two turns, so one turn for that unit to uh, deploy and then another turn for, for the rallying uh, in order for those um, markers to be uh, removed. Um, and then again, that's just if the um, rally is successful. So um, it, it's, it's not a waste of time, even, even though we didn't actually succeed in forcing it to deploy. Uh, it's still really inhibiting uh, enemies' movement uh, on the battlefield. Morale uh, within All Hell Let Loose is um, managed through um, the order and activation system. So what I've done here is laid out uh, in parade formation a standard, regular uh, infantry formation. Uh, this is American. Um, so what we have is we have the HQ and we have um, our forward observer and then we have nine uh, infantry um, platoons or stands and then we just have heavy machine gun, um, uh, a mortar team uh, and we've got a, an additional uh, infantry uh, unit. Um, so. 12 stands, there might be trucks attached, uh, there might be uh, M3 or armoured personnel carriers. Uh, they do not count towards the total uh, of 12 uh, units, which is the uh, maximum size of a formation. Um, so this here is effectively the fighting uh, piece and really for morale uh, we ignore both the forward observer and the HQ. Uh, they cannot be removed on the tabletop and again don't count towards uh, morale totals. Uh, so we have um, two uh, morale uh, break points. The first one is at 50%, so in the um, case of a unit of 12, if these six units were eliminated uh, then the remaining um, units uh, uh, within the formation would have to make uh, a morale test. 
that morale test occurs at the end of the activation phase in which um, the final um, unit that triggered the morale test uh, was removed. That is usually um, at the end of an opponent's uh, turn, although it can happen uh, in your turn uh, if there was ambush fire, for example, or, or your assault goes badly. So we will assume um, that these six here have been removed and the morale test is simply an activation check. Uh, but it's an activation check at minus one because the unit is at 50% or more losses. Um, if the unit rolls really badly, and in the case of a regular unit, uh, that would mean if they rolled a one, then the unit is forced to retire. Um, that is simply done by rolling 3d6 and retiring that number of inches. If the unit passes its morale test, or even if it fails, uh, every subsequent um, uh, morale check, every subsequent activation, is made at minus one uh, because of the losses. So what this does is effectively degrade the capability of a formation over time as the losses mount. So even if it's um, able to stick around, um, you're going to be able to do less with it for the rest of the game. And there's always that risk that that unit will uh, panic and decide to retire. Now, if the losses continue to mount for the formation and it loses two more and it gets down to two thirds or 66 percent or more, then uh, again, another uh, activation check is required, this time with minus two on the dice. Uh, and again, that minus two continues for the rest of the game. So immediately that a morale threshold is passed, at the end of the activation phase in which that happens, uh, a check must be made. And then every subsequent activation check uh, is also has that penalty applied. And so units that are down to uh, one third strength are at a significant disadvantage for the rest of the game. Please note, it does not matter whether the units are disordered. Uh, it is simply that if these have been eliminated, um, then um, that is the trigger. If these are disordered, if they're already retiring, again, it doesn't matter uh, what state they're in. Uh, the check is just made at minus two or minus one, dependent on uh, which threshold has been breached. Um, formations that have lost two thirds when they retire forcibly, roll 6d6 rather than 3d6. Um, and uh, essentially, they are going to retire um, off the field. You are, you are very much at risk of losing units that have taken that much punishment. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think of the video in the comments below. Uh, please hit the subscribe button and go check out uh, the website and the rules. Thank you very much.